Okay, we are recording. Hey guys, it is Katie with Katie Reads, and this video is a little different than what I've normally done in the past. This is the beginning of my author series. As you guys know, I like talking about reading, writing, and reselling books. Um, so it just makes sense that one of the first people I interview is an actual friend of mine and someone that I connected with um, on Instagram through what we call Bookstagram. Uh, the cool kids call it bookstagram anyways. Um, so this is my friend Alessandro Reale, um, and I will put him full screen, let him introduce himself, and then we'll kind of ask him some questions about his author journey, the types of books he writes, and just a lot of other things like that. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm Alessandro Reale, and I am an indie author living right outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I've been writing my whole life practically since I was like five or six, but I didn't start taking it very seriously until um, I started writing more often in four, when I was 14, but I didn't uh, publish until um, in 2011 when I was 21, uh, published my first young adult novel. And since then I've published the two young adult novels and five children's books. And uh, yeah, that's where I am today. Wow, that is awesome. And how old are you? 31. 31. Wow, all those accomplishments at 31. I I think that's pretty impressive. I had no idea we were the same age either. So that's that's kind of interesting. I always thought you were younger than me for some reason. Or I just always feel like I'm old. One of the two. Who knows? I, I feel I feel way older too. So yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so you said you've been writing since a really young age. So what kind of um prompted you to like pursue publishing and, and what made you choose Amazon? So um, I always wrote stories, but I never really published. Like I just thought it like I consider it just like a, a hobby or pastime. And um, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it was just a short pastime that I never really took seriously as a career, but um I think by when I hit college, I was like, no, maybe I should start doing this full time and start taking it seriously. So I was looking for publishing options and publishing wise, it was a little hard to go the traditional route. Like I was quer querying agents, um, just trying to find someone to represent me, my first manuscript, and it wasn't that easy. Um, and then eventually I just decided to self publish because I heard that was a great way to, um, to have full control over your writing when you publish it. So um, I just did some research and the one that popped up was create space, which is um, it, which was affiliated with Amazon before they mm -hmm. switched over to KDP right. Kindle publishing. Yeah. Um, and it was very intuitive, very intuitive, very user friendly, very simple to use. I just uploaded the manuscript, had them design the cover, um, yeah, I set the price. I just had full control over it, so that's why I chose it. It was the it was the easiest, most user friendly, and it, it just made the whole process much simpler. Instead of having to stress about finding an agent and doing all that, yeah, all that work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work to get a publishing deal, and that's why I try to promote other self published authors like myself. That just you know we're we're grassroots. We are are you know, everything from A to Z, including our editor and marketer and, and all of that. So I guess that brings me to another question, like your writing style. Are you an outline guy? Are you a wing it and we'll edit the crap out of it later? What What is your writing and editing style? So for the novels, I definitely have to outline, like I have to outline every single scene, really map it out just because it's such a big story and I do a lot of world building. So mm -hmm. I have to have some kind of plan in place. Um, but with my kids' books, I go more of the winged route. Like I have a very basic skeleton and then I just build around that. Um, so I, I believe the terms are plotter and pantser. I think mm -hmm. that's the terms that are used in our community. So yeah. I'm a little bit of both, but since I've been doing mostly the kids' stories recently, um, I've definitely been going the pants around and it's, it's been working well for me because I found out when I outline, I get a little carried away and I focus more on that one than the actual writing. Yes. That is my weakness sometimes too. So I literally have to force myself to just have basic ideas and then kind of dive into them. I do do things like, 
what you kind of said when you're world building you kind of have to like you can't name the same character the same name or you know things like that you can't keep reusing different city names that you make up or whatever but so uh you write mostly fiction or nonfiction? mostly fiction um I've tried nonfiction. I like I, I just have a really bad habit of kind of embellishing on that. So I think I just gravitate more more towards fiction. Maybe okay. I'll do nonfiction in the future, but for now, like my comfort zone is in the fiction realm. Okay, got it. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here really quick, and I'm going to show the viewers your Amazon author page, so they can kind of see here um what you can you see it all right yep perfect all right so uh first off props to you this is an awesome headshot whoever your photographer is did an awesome job um i think a lot of authors when they publish on amazon they don't really know the next steps and i i think this uh author page is an excellent example and a really good template um having a professional great headshot having your bio um, it looks like you attached your blog to your author page. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I have it linked up. It's through WordPress, and they make it very easy to seamlessly just uh, what's called have like a, a running feed going of your latest yeah. post. Yeah. So I mean, it's mm -hmm. awesome. And so um, you can see the the blog post based on most recent to oldest, um, and then you see a full lineup of of all your books here um, in Kindle edition, or you know you can look at paperback editions. Um, so I think this is a really good example for other writers that are interested in taking the dive on Amazon and KDP and, and kind of like the next steps after that, because just because your book's out there and you tell people where to get your book, you also kind of want to establish yourself as an author on Amazon and on those pages, because if you see here, you can click this follow button and um, you can actually follow authors. And as uh, you know, that's kind of free marketing in itself, because as you add you know, um, products or, or books, you know, your followers are getting notifications about that. So real quick, what is the first novel that you wrote? Uh, it's that second from the left Dodgers doorway. Dodgers doorway. This is the first one that you ever wrote. Wow. And what year was that? So I started writing when I was 14. So back in like 2000, three yeah 2003 but i kept changing it over and over and um i just kept editing it i didn't finish it until like 2010 and then published in 2011. wow uh, but when i published it the first time I, I i didn't polish it as well as i should have so in 2016 well from 2014 to 2016 i re-edited it polished it up because i strengthened as a writer and i just I made it better. So what you're looking at now is the second edition, which is the one that I'm selling, which is better written, better editing. Right. Um, just like I said, more overall polished. So that was published, uh, I believe, the end of 2016. Wow. And then this is a two part series, right? Yeah, that's the sequel, Return to Story World. And then I'm, I, I should be working on the next two sequels in the series. I've just been so carried away with other, uh, right. other commitments and all the kids' books. Right, right. So these two books, are these um, adult? Are they children? Are all of these children books? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, so Dodger Story and Return to Story World are young adults. So um, I wrote them with the intention of being like ages 12 and up. Mm -hmm. um, but I had some people buying it for their kids who are like around 10 years old and they were able to read it. Um, okay. I just recommend, I recommend 12 and up just cause there's a little bit of violence, a little bit of action in it. So yeah. Yeah. Like, Typical for YA. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like, it's uh, a little more mature, but still has like an overall young adultish theme. Right. Um, right. The next book, Jenny and the Thunder Kicker, the third one from the left, that is more like middle grade chapter book. Um, I think it's around 10,000 words. It's aimed for like ages eight to 11. So if Dodger's Doorway is a little too advanced for them, I recommend Jenny and the Thunder Kicker. Yep, and Izzy actually owns a copy of this book, you guys, and she absolutely loves it. We read it together and uh, yeah, I'm so thankful that Alessandro sent her a, you know, Signed copy, no less. So she loved it. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm glad she likes it. I'm really glad it, it it's it, I'm glad that I was able to communicate with that um, that demographic because I had my young adult books. And then if you see like along the line, I have more children's books. Those are for the really young crowd, like ages yeah. three to six or seven. So like Jenny and the Thunder Kicker is a nice medium. It's like for the middle yeah. grade. So I'm just trying to cover like the full spectrum and eventually. Yeah, I, you got like, them all the way from elementary pre-K-ish to uh, almost high school age. So. Yeah, and eventually I want to tackle like the adult audiences, but that's further down the line. I found my niche with the with the um, the children's books. So I'm just like writing that for now. Yeah, yeah. And talking about, you know, um, accomplishments and, and niches and all of that, this book is um, exciting for you because this is, is this your only book that's actually a coloring book as well? No, that one and the one next to it from Zero to Hero, they're both okay. coloring books, but only one Samantha it was my first children's book and it is my currently my only award winner. Um, it won the 2018 Best Children's Book Award at the Independent Independent Author Book Expo. Yeah, and let's talk about that. I want to share that too here, real quick. Um, the I've never heard of this organization, uh, Independent Authors Book Experience. I've never heard of them before, and I found it really interesting. And their website is really awesome. Um, and there's a lot of interesting stuff here. I think in resources as well for authors that. Um, maybe are starting out or have been around but don't know all the resources available to them, kind of like myself. But yeah, if you go to the IABX Awards and you scroll down, here is our buddy right here, Alessandra Reale, 2018 Best Children's Book Award winner. So how, what even made you hear about this organization and made you want to submit um, the, the book? Only one Samantha. So I started taking, I started coming back and taking the writing more seriously again in 2007, 2016, 2017. And I did a lot of research to find events because I couldn't just rely on social media to sell books. I needed to do right. more in person stuff. So I Googled like book expos, book festivals, um, just uh, anything related to books that was an event uh, especially for indie authors. Okay. Um, and I found this one. It, it's a bit of a hike from where I live. It was about an hour, hour and a half drive. But yeah, it looked like it was in New Jersey, maybe. Yep, uh, Upper Jersey. So yeah, it was a bit of a hike, but still, like, it was such a fun time doing that expo. I got to connect with other indie authors, and I submitted only one Samantha, just thinking like, yeah, I might as well. I've got nothing to lose. Right, right. And yeah, I just remember that feeling, like. I'm just there at the table, just hanging out. And then um, I was in this like a little offshoot room. So I didn't, I wasn't near the main stage and the organizer came in and she said, oh, they're calling you up on stage. I'm like, why? And she's like, you just won an award. So I remember <laughs> freaking out and I went up and they said like, oh, you won the, uh, the best children's book award. And I was just like so completely blown away. Yeah. That I didn't have a speech or anything. I just said, thank you. Like, right. Right. Say. So, um, really it was just exciting. Yeah. Such a great feeling. Um, just like winning that award, like for my creativity being recognized for it, it was such a, a reassuring feeling. Yeah. And it made me feel like, okay, I can definitely do this. I can definitely have a career in this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just kind of like the motivation that you need. I, I've submitted some flash fiction stories and won, you know, first, second, and third place in different competitions. And that really, really motivates me. It also like it's it's a marketing tool, right? And a way for you to collaborate with, you know, companies or publishers and things like that. But it was just really motivating, like, okay, the outside world does like what I'm putting on paper, you know, because I think sometimes as authors, we hate what we write, right? We hate yeah. it. Um, and if it doesn't do well right away, we kind of freak out and think, okay, maybe everybody else hates it too. But um, so I think I agree with that. I think as an author, it's also really important to just put yourself out there also in competitions. A lot of competitions out there are free. You don't necessarily have to pay for them. Um, so, and in your instance, I mean, this was an expo, this was an event. So it just kind of, you know, you kind of got a little bit of everything in one, but even online, you can find, um, some really good competitions to submit to and 
Um, I definitely encourage people to do that. I think it's also a great way to meet other authors that are doing things and submitting and winning too, because, you know, your network is pretty important when you're an author and you have to market yourself. So absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to go back to your Amazon page here real quick, just to talk about the last few. Um, so these two are, this was the award winner. Awesome cover. It's still, it really is a really cute cover. And both of these are for probably what preschool elementary age because they're coloring books. Yeah, they're short, simple coloring books, about 500 pa or excuse me, 500 words, um, yeah. very simple reads. But it's one of those things where the lessons are ageless. Gotcha. Um, and then we all make mistakes. Izzy does not own this one, I don't think. So you'll have to tell me a little bit about this one. Sure. So that's the first children's book I wrote that wasn't a coloring book. Um, that was a little experimental. So um, that book from the cover to all the illustrations inside are all images, all pictures that I took, uh, all black and white, like, making mistakes. Like on the cover, you can see like the shoes on the wrong feet. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of a, a big passion project because I'm the kind of person who makes a ton of mistakes. Right. And uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you can relate to it. Like yeah. you beat yourself up because you think I can definitely do better. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's one of the things I'm trying to get over, like not thinking the world's going to end when I make a mistake. So I wrote the book as kind of like a self, self reassuring thing yeah. to say, we all make mistakes, we can grow from them. So that's how that came about. And um, it's had, it's had a pretty good fan base. I mean, it's not a coloring book, so it has that disadvantage, but still mm -hmm. a great lesson that I think kids can definitely learn from. Yeah. And relate to, and, and sometimes, you know, as a parent, I know sometimes that's just kind of what the kids need, you know, is that reassurance that other, someone else is out there like them or, you know, that we're all human and this is what happens when you're human, you know? Um, so yeah, that's awesome. And then this looks like a bundle a bundle option for these two books. Yep. And then here we have Anxious Alex. And this I really want you to talk about because you, um, on Facebook, I've seen you've been kind of creative with ways of selling this book. And I, I just think it's really awesome. So definitely, uh, if you don't mind sharing that, let us kind of share that story too. Definitely. So Anxious Alex, I, I wrote about a year ago uh, based on I, I have anxiety. I've had anxiety since I was like 10 years old. So I didn't understand it when I was a kid. And I wrote it as a way to show kids how to recognize what anxiety is and how to live with it because it's tough. Like even when you're an adult, it's tough. So um, I just wrote it just using my experience and I wanted to pass that uh, knowledge on to the children. Um but it's been a big hit because uh, the illustrate people love the illustrations. They love that it's such like a personal story. Um, mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, one of the big things that you uh, about it that you mentioned this past week, it kind of I, I don't want to say it went viral, but <laughs> I had this um, unique idea where I posted about my book in local Facebook yard sale groups. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're on Facebook, you're, I, I know you with your reselling, like you definitely mm -hmm. probably hawk those Facebook marketplace, those man. Yeah, dude, it's, it's crazy. Like you can buy, you can buy or sell anything on there. And I thought, you know what, instead of buying or selling something like, like a weight set or clothes or something like that, why don't I try my books? So yeah. I posted about anxious Alex and I posted about it on Thursday and within hours I got a ton of orders and just people saying like, Oh, I, I want to buy this book. Like, how do, I, how do I get it? How do I pay you? So my phone's just blowing up while I'm at work. And I sold out of my current stock, which was about 50 books. I had to order about 100 more. Um, wow. so, and those 100 sold out by Saturday. So I had to buy another 100 on top of that. Oh, my gosh. That is so awesome. It, so, like, price point, do you kind of adjust that when you're selling in person? Or do you kind of just keep it keep it the same? I just keep it the same. Like I, the one thing I don't like about this book is that the price is ten dollars because it's about a thousand words. I wanted to sell it for cheaper, but the one, the one bad thing about KDP and I think a lot of self-publishing platforms is if there are color, there's a color interior. 
mm-hmm. it forces the like your minimum price is going to be higher because it costs of printing, shipping, yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my minimum printing price was like eight or nine dollars. So I had to sell it more. So I chose 10. If I could, I'd sell it cheaper. But um, I've had people say like, no, ten dollars is a fine price. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I mean, people are spending sixteen to twenty five dollars brand new for you know just picture books that have you know maybe one hundred and fifty words throughout the whole thing. So yeah, I think that's a great price point. Um, but what a creative way to you know kind of uh, put your stuff out there. Like I, I was so impressed with that. I. I I almost kind of thought, why am I not doing this? <laughs> you know, in my local area, that's it's a really, really great idea because I know a lot of libraries and areas where they would normally have author expos for you to kind of put your work out there and put up a booth and everything. I mean, I know you have a lot of experience with that. A lot of those places right now in my area anyways in Michigan are still kind of not 100%, you know, free reign. So those events aren't quite happening yet. So I think that's a really, really great way to kind of pivot. Um, so yeah, props to you, man. That was that was really creative. Yeah, I was very surprised that it worked out and I'm extremely thankful. I'm definitely gonna be doing it again. Not, not anytime soon because uh, I don't wanna spam the group, but I think like closer to Christmas is like the, gotcha. like the perfect time to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a really good point, too, is like, um, you know, reading the room and understanding that, you know, you, you don't want to spam and get and get crazy and things like that. And spamming groups, actually, I want to touch on that real quick before I show your blog and we kind of wrap this up. Um, do you, you know, do you collaborate with other local authors in your area? Are you part of any writing groups, Facebook groups, anything like that? Do you think that helps motivate you or helps you learn new things? What is your take on that? So I was part of some groups, um, but, and this is just me, like I, I hate to paint with a broad brush, but I feel like it's so tough when you're part of a group with so many creative types that you get a lot of mixed messages. I personally think it's better if someone were to find a mentor, a singular mentor who could give you like the straightforward information instead of giving you conflicting information from so many different like thought processes. Mm -hmm. Again, this could be different for so many other people. But for me personally, I would prefer going with the mentor group. The one exception to that is there is a writing group online. Um, Can I say the name of it? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, it's um, it's twenty books to fifty k, and okay. it focuses uh, mostly on marketing. It's a great group filled with countless indie authors who just share their marketing tactics, like how to build a newsletter, how to generate leads. Um, they have free courses in there that you can join and uh, that you can read at your leisure. Um, it's a great resource. You can partake in discussions. They do have some rigid rules, but it's for the best because they're trying to keep it from becoming a spam group. So um, it's, it's got amazing resources. I definitely recommend to check it out to find out information about mm-hmm. marketing. Yeah, I, I'd say the there. same, even with reselling groups, you, you do need to have those rigid rules, especially when you're getting, you know, hitting five, 10, 15 K people. Um, you know, you do kind of have to be a little black and white with some things and, and kind of rein people in that way. But, yeah, that's awesome. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any resources that other authors watching this interview on my channel can use, I definitely want to spread the word about that. Um, so we are also going to show this awesome, it, it's WordPress. I use WordPress for my blog too. Um, I think WordPress, my personal opinion, um, I'm sure you can agree, Alessandro, is it is very user-friendly. You can even get free a free blog from WordPress. You don't necessarily have to pay anything for it. And I mean, I I think my site and, and his site as well, it's very professional. I'm very um, pleased with the different options that WordPress is, gives you for your site as well. And um, like we also mentioned earlier with his Amazon page, it connects directly with um, certain interfaces. So that's, I think that's really big too. Um, and a good way for you to kind of have your social media all connecting together as much as possible. So this is an awesome site, dude. So you've got your your blog, um, Author Tips. That's that's really cool. Um, the store. Now, tell 
tell us a little bit about um, the planners and journals because there's not anything here. Yeah, that's a work in progress. So okay. um, one of the things I've been de delving into is creating what are called no content or low content books. Uh, so that's like journals, planners, just uh, like books with no content that you could fill out on your own. So I've published a couple. Um, it's very easy to make a template and um, to just build these books out using stock images for covers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if you want to check out a good template resource, it's called Tangent Templates. Tangent um, Templates, okay. Yeah, it's it's great. Like, like you can pick out like, okay, I want to make a calendar template. You just take that, download it as a PDF, upload it to KDP, make your cover, and then just do the rest of the publishing process. So I'm planning to make a bunch of planners and journals I'm going to be selling off the side. Uh, like I said, I'm just building that out. Now. I've been focused on everything else so far, but planners and journals are definitely coming. Yeah, and I think that's important too because you could even um, piggyback journals with like the Anxious Alex story. Or, mm -hmm. you know, because um, journaling is a really good tool for a lot of kids, a lot of adults. Um, and I also think planners and journals are things that a lot of authors sleep on because this doesn't necessarily require a specific demographic. Like you can broaden things out quite a bit. Um, people who maybe only read nonfiction could be buying your, your planner or journal that you create um, and maybe not read any of your fiction, but they're, you know, they're buying your, your planners and journals. Um, and I think journals are also kind of a replenishable in a way. That's something someone's always going to keep buying. Um, same thing with planners too, but maybe only once a year. <laughs> but with journals, you know, so I think that's a really, really great, um, great addition to add to your uh, writing portfolio. And I think it's a, just another, you know, even if it's passive income, it's it's income, right? So all about those profits. <laughs> Got a contact page. Yeah, this is awesome. So definitely check out his site um, and make sure to subscribe to Alessandro's newsletter. And you're also on social media. I'm gonna put all his links in the description of this video once we premiere it um, and put it out on YouTube. You've got TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, all right. Well, um, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for your time and kind of sharing your knowledge as an author and an award winner and all that fancy stuff. Um, I'm going to put you full screen again. And just if you want to give any um, sign off ending advice, um, market yourself, if you have anything coming up or anything that you want to share, this video will probably drop in the next week or so. So whatever you want to share. Uh, well, first, thank you so much for having me on this. It's It's been an honor. I loved being able to talk to you, and I appreciate you doing this to help out other indie authors, so thank you. Um, and to any potential authors out there who are planning to break out, break out and start doing this for themselves, my advice is even if you don't sell 100 copies, even if you don't become rich and famous, just do it for fun. You have nothing to lose. You know, if you want to write, just write. Just I, I mean, I, I got to follow Nike's lead and just say, just do it. I mean, you have literally nothing to lose. It's a great creative outlet. It can help you coping with anxiety, depression. Um, writing is just a great pastime. And if you enjoy doing it, do it, even if you make money or not. Bingo. I couldn't agree more. I think as a writer, you're you're always going to write, period, no matter what. You know, exactly. even if you're not making money off of it, I, I myself personally, I have so many stories and ideas written down and I've been swamped with other things, but I'm still always writing something. I'm still always writing ideas together um, and it, it just never stops. And if you love it, you're going to do it no matter what. So, exactly. well, thank you so much. Um, and we will be wrapping this up. And again, make sure to check the description um, with all the links for Alessandro. Please support him. Go check out his books. I know y'all got kids or, or you could at least use a coloring book and give it to a kid. So there you go. <laughs> all right. Thanks, man.